Hello. Just going to hang out here for a few minutes, let people get uh, shuffled in. If you want to follow along on this stream, you can check out my community page. I have posted a sci file and a PSD for the piece that I will be working on today. That way, if you have a program that reads either sci or PSD files, you can do this along with me and hopefully pick up some pick up some uh, little skills and tricks but we are going to be doing a stream for couchcon couchcon on ice starting this in a couple of minutes hello willie silver how are you today and i'll go over what we're going to be doing a little bit closer to the hour just want to give people a couple minutes to shuffle in. Yeah, most things read PSD. I think only Psy reads Psy, but hey, I included it just for those weirdos like me who still use Psy. I know Procreate reads it. A lot of things read PSD. Which, people do like to just crap all over Adobe. You have to admit, though, that they have created two ubiquitous file formats. Everything knows how to handle PDF, and everything knows how to handle PSD. As much as people like to crap all over Adobe, very few companies would actually do that. If you go, let me go ahead and grab the link. If you go to my main page, there's a community tab, but let me go ahead and grab that. Here's the post. Here is the post. That ain't the post, is it? Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, you just have to hit read more. And it'll give you two Dropbox links. They're labeled weirdly because YouTube is weird, but whatever. Anyway. Anyway. Let's go ahead and ugh, spill my coffee everywhere. That's where I want to be. Okay. Okay. So, we are going to be doing a fairly long tutorial. I expect this to last about two or three hours. It's going to be a long one. I am going to show you how to take any picture, a uh, rendered scene like this, just a character portrait, any picture, and tell a story by using the color. That's not right. <laughs> Nightbot, go away. <laughs> Oh, ads are blocked. That ain't right. Nightbot.tv So we're going to look at how to add color to a piece, both through the local color and by using ambient light. We're just going to disable that. Uh, might as well. <coughs> um, PSD. Get the PSD and sci file to follow along here. Okay, should have set that up. Yeah, this is going to be a long one, but the video will be saved. Okay, I think everything has quit and has uh, quit being a catastrophe. So let's actually get started. Hello. Hello. Welcome to CouchCon on Ice. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be coloring this picture multiple times because I'm going to be showing you how to use local color and ambient light to tell a story. And with this piece, without touching a single speck of the line art. The line art is the composition. We're not changing the composition. 
just by changing the colors that we use, we're going to tell several different stories with this piece. And if you go to the link that was recently posted in chat, you can get a PSD or a sci file for this exact piece that is set up exactly as I will be using it so that you can follow along in your preferred software. And what we're going to be doing is coloring this about maybe three or four times, depending on how many times I can get through it. And by using different colors and different palettes, we can change the entire look and feel of this piece, but not only through the mood and atmosphere, but we can change who these characters are, what they do, and everything about them. Not by changing the line art. The line art is going to stay exactly as it is. We are going to start off just by changing the color. And first, we are going to start laying down some color. And I'll talk you through the entire process here. So we're going to go into overlays. And the first way that we color this is going to be the way that I originally drew this piece last year. It's not going to look as good as this because a piece like this will take me three or four days to do. I don't have three or four days. I have two or three hours and we're going to be doing it several times. So it's not going to look as good. But this is the kind of mood and feeling that I'm going to be going for with this piece the first time. And then we're going to do it again and change it. But just by looking at this piece, you can learn and pick up some things about these characters. And it might not be a linear story. It might not be a whole picture, but you know some things about these characters just by looking at them. So that's what we're going to go through with this stream today is how you can build that kind of story and give, a, give an idea about a character's personality, about maybe what they do, how much money they make. There's a lot of that in this piece that might seem very subtle, but when we put it against the different ways that I will color it, it will come across very, very well. So we're going to come back over here. I don't want it on the PSD. I'm actually going to close this and open it as the Psy version because that one's just a little bit nicer to use in Psy. There we go. And I'm going to close that one just so I don't get confused and click all over the wrong place. Hello? There. There we go. So we're going to start off with the bottom folder. We're going to work from the bottom layer and move up to the top if you are following along at home. So we're going to open up the bottom folder first. And there are three overlays. So we're going to make that one visible. And since we're coloring it the way that I had originally intended, we're going to go with just the bottom city, which looks a bit ridiculous, but this is just going to be our scene outside the window. A lot of times I will take really, really quick shortcuts with things that are meant to be in the background or not very well rendered or they're not super important. So I've got a blurred out stock photo of, I think this is somewhere in LA. And then I want to do this painting the same way. So I've got a stock photo of a painting and on their own, they look kind of funky, but that's fine because we can make them fit in very easily. So we no longer need the overlays. We're just going to put in our city and our painting. Now, Geo. Now we're going to go into the background and immediately the city in the background went outside. It's no longer in the apartment and our painting has gone into our frame because I've already colored this. It's all white. I did not want to spend a ridiculous amount of time doing a ridiculous amount of things. So if you're just joining us, you can head over to the community page on this on my channel and get the file so that you can follow along. 
we are just getting started here. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to start laying down local color. And what local color is, is it's just the color that things are in ambient and diffuse light. There's no light shining directly on it. It's not in shadow. It's just the color that it is. If you were to take it outside without the sun shining directly on it, it's just outside in natural light. That's what local color is. So these walls in the original piece were kind of this dark slate gray. So that's what we're going to go for. And uh, something has gone a little bit funky. Oh, I think I know it's gone funky. Okay. That's what's gone funky. And we're just going to make the walls this kind of slate gray. Celine, come back. I need you colored too. There we go. There we go. Crisis averted. And we're just going to color the walls. I might want a little bit more blue in there. and eh, not that much blue. There we go. So we're going to have them kind of this dark blue slate color. It's a little overwhelming, but that's what I want it. I want it about that color. And if you missed it, let me bring that other piece back as well because it was helpful. Uh, where did I put it? Where did I put it? There we go, this one. So we're going for vaguely this look. This is going to be the same process that I used to color it originally. So this is what we're going for. So we're going to start off with this ridiculous blue. This is our local color. And we're just going to make sure everything is colored in. I really wish I could get a brush size larger than 500, but oh well. And if you're following along, there are some clipping groups. We're not going to mess with those just yet. Thank you. So the reason why I'm going to kind of explain a little bit of the story that I am telling with this piece. So the reason why I'm going for slate walls is I'm going to keep that color. I want to save it because we're going to come back is if we go for what I would call a rental color, vaguely cream colored, maybe because a, pre a previous tenant smoked in it. So let's put it on like two or three saturation. Like, there we go. That tells a very different story already. This suggests subconsciously that this house is owned this suggests that it's rented because a lot of people, if they own their house, they're going to make it theirs. So if we have this kind of rental apartment white, it suggests that he doesn't own this place. If we have it, this ridiculous, nobody would paint their walls this color except these walls are painted this color, he's probably not renting this place. And if he is, it's probably an obscenely expensive rental. So... That right there, and we're going to get into that a little bit more, that tells part of the story just by changing the color of the wall. We can change the entire feel of how much money does this man have? Apparently a lot if he's living somewhere with dark slate gray walls. And then we're going to do the same thing with the floor. Yeah. There we go. So I want these floors to be kind of like a nice, rich hardwood. Like kind of in there. Kind of in there. So we've got these nice, kind of these brown hardwood colors. Again, if we make that more of a, uh, say this color. Something about that just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem quite as well kept. So rich colors, dark colors, not necessarily overly saturated colors, you typically want to stay 
at least for main items, you typically want to stay under 100 for saturation. But these nice rich colors imply that this space is well kept. This faded color kind of implies that it's not, especially if this were wood. This, if this were a wood floor, this is not a very well kept wood floor. This one, someone has put time into maintaining this floor. So that, that's the whole thing that we're doing, is we're picking our colors not on a palette. You'll see a lot of people who will use these Harmony palettes, which are great for design. But if your character is not focused on design, they're not going to be using three or four color Harmony palettes with three shades each. That, that's something that you want to do for graphic design. It's not how most people furnish their houses. So we're going to get away from that type of palette and we're focusing more on a natural organic palette the same way that your house definitely has a palette. The house that you live in has a palette. The palette of my house is very Christmas. There's a lot of red and there's a lot of green in this house, which is very unintentional, but we've got a very Christmassy palette. So... This palette, we're going to have a lot of really dark, rich, earthy tones. And we're going to keep doing this. So the next one, ignore all of these clipping masks if you are following along. We'll get to those in a little bit. So now we're going to look at the rug. And it's the same thing. We want kind of like a blue that doesn't really match the wall, but it will complement the wall. So I kind of want to come more towards cyan. And like a desaturated, like that kind of cyan. Maybe even less saturated than that. Maybe a little bit more gray. And because we have this rich color of the wall, the rich color of the floor, the less we saturate this rug, the more it becomes a focal piece. Someone would have made that decision based on the color of the wall, and based on the color of the rug, that this is the rug that I want. Otherwise, we could say that, you know, just nobody cares, and he's got this bright pink rug, which looks visually interesting. I won't lie about that, but there is, again, two very different deliberate choices that one of these characters made. It's The, the house belongs to the guy, so... He made this choice between this rug and that rug. This rug is visually interesting. This rug fits the theme of the house. So already with just the floor, the wall, and the rug, we're starting to tell the viewer who this character is. And it's just very, very subtle visual cues that you don't even notice. It's a very subconscious thing. So we're going to come up here again to the windowsill. Uh, is that the... That's the windowsill. Okay. And that is the... Or not the sill. The, 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 the frame. We're going to come up here. I want this to be not quite white. Maybe a little bit more in that area. Like, vaguely saturated, not quite white, but just enough that it will stand out against the dark of the walls. Because, again, just kind of showing the difference. If we made this dark, it, do it doesn't pop very well. So someone, whoever built the house, whatever, again, this is a decision that was made. Everything that goes on this page is a decision that someone made. Almost everything. The plant, maybe not so much, but we can still play with the plant too and get different moods with the plant. So I'm going to go with the white because visually the white pops out against the slate walls just a little bit better. As a design element, that makes sense. So we're going to go there and then we need the wall trim. And I want the wall trim Again, lots of different ways we can go with this. I want it to be similar to the floor, but to stand out a little bit. I don't like that. That, there we go. 
Did I not get that little bit of the window? Let me... No, I didn't. <laughs> okay. So again, we have... Ugh. Why? Oh, that's why. Okay. So we have our wall trim here, which again, we could... I'm going to save this just in case I decide to go on a weird tangent. We could decide that we've got a much darker wall trim. And that changed right there the entire, the entire mood of the house just by switching between a lighter and a darker wall trim. The darker wall trim looks really interesting, but it makes it a focal point. The lighter one fits in with the house. It pops, but it's not necessarily what's going to draw the eye. The eye will still go to the more bold colors like the wall and the floor. And again, we could even say, eh, let's go for this like really ugly, just completely not very well kept up, which against the slate looks ridiculous, but maybe, maybe they just aren't taking very good care of their trim. Maybe he's just recently painted the walls and hasn't got to the trim. Who knows? There's a lot that could be going on when the trim is implying that it's not very well kept while the walls are this really rich color. So everything is a decision. Every single thing is a decision. The sofa legs, we're actually going to do the sofa first because the legs will kind of offset from the sofa. And we can again so in in the stories this this character actually does have a black leather sofa but for the sake of this piece i decided not to do that because all of a sudden the so the sofa became a really weird focal point so instead of going for that we'll say eh, maybe he got a new sofa and maybe it's just like this this kind of bluey gray, the same color that everything else is in the house, they both look good. The black sofa still looks good, but for the sake of the composition, it just became a focal point. I didn't like that. But either way, either way, it kind of works. I don't know why, <laughs> why I have to click twice to go there. Conversely, again, maybe... He just moved in. He hasn't had a chance to buy a sofa. It's it's a rental. Maybe he's renting a really ugly sofa. Maybe he's borrowing a really ugly sofa from his parents. Like, you could give him a yellow sofa. But I don't think he would have a yellow sofa. I think he would have something much more understated. And then for those sofa legs that I was talking about, we're just going to go down here and just pick a color that contrasts. And because the sofa is blue, we're going to say that the sofa legs themselves are made of wood. So, and they just contrast. That, necess that isn't necessarily a choice he made. That's a choice that the designer of the sofa made. But if we say, eh, I want them to be this kind of gray color, this kind of really dark gray color, that doesn't look as good. The, the whoever designed that sofa didn't have a very good eye for color. The brown, however, gives it that nice little pop. Uh, where are we going? Metal trim. Okay. So this metal trim is the, the tables. So we've got these tables here, the legs on this table, legs on that table and we're going to give it about right here yeah that works and I'm going to make them the same color because I want them I want it to imply that it's either part of a set or from the same manufacturer so these tables were designed to be in a room together if we say, okay, so that one there, we've got this, uh, this nice silvery gray color. And then this one over here, maybe this one's got darker table legs. 
all of a sudden it's no longer a set. It's more of a hodgepodge. He bought one at one point and then he bought the other sometime down the line. They don't fit together anymore, which some people's houses are like that. My house is like that. His isn't. He is putting a lot more thought into what he has in his house or someone did. So for the sake of this one, all of the metal trim on the tables is going to be the same uh, the same color. I couldn't read my labels there for a second and got really confused. The metal details, this is just the little feet down here on that table. We're going to make that kind of like a black rubber because it'll stand out really nicely. It'll protect the floor. That's pretty much all that is so that his lovely wood floors don't get scraped. Maybe he put those on there. Maybe they came. Who knows? Now we've got the wood flooring or the wood furniture. So we could say that, yeah, these are wood, which for the sake of this one, they are. And I want them to not necessarily match the house. So we've got these, these kind of orangey shades of brown here. Maybe I want this to be more of a reddish brown. And maybe I want it to be a little more saturated and have a higher value. So again, when we color them the same, they have the same leg color, they have the same wood color, they're made from the same type of wood. They are bought as a set or maybe bought from the same manufacturer, something like that. They don't really look like they're a set because of the way this table looks, but they at least came from the same manufacturer. Conversely, let's go up here and we'll get like this color. And then we'll uh, give this one some, not that, some like that. Now, right there, again, just completely hodgepodge. No thought was put into how these two tables would look right next to one another. It's a very, uh, <laughs> Very millennial way of furnishing your house, I think. But we're going to go for that. Because I want these to be a set. He wants these to be a set. So they are a set. Again, just kind of going to color the lamp. So everything right now, we've got a lot of these wood colors and we've got a lot of slates and blues. So the lamp, we could continue on this trend and we could give him a blue lamp but that blue lamp just disappears into the rest of the room it doesn't look as good he could have bought a blue lamp maybe he wasn't thinking about it maybe someone with a uh, slightly more taste than he has helped him buy these things and maybe they knew that his walls are kind of slate gray so they thought that a cream or yellow colored lamp would pop better in his room and would be a nice focal point for his room. And then we've got the lamp shade, which I think I want that to yeah, kind of match. A little bit different, a little bit brighter, but there we go. The lamp is now just something that stands out. Was purchased to sit in a room that has these really ridiculous dark walls. And now it pops and it kind of in a weird way helps bring the room together. It makes it feel more organic. If it were blue, like, let's just, eh. For the sake of this, flap. If we did that, well, <laughs> that doesn't look very good at all. So we're gonna have a yellow lamp. Someone thought that that lamp looked good and that the blue, uh, the blue option didn't. So here we go. Now we've got our flower pot. The flower pot can be like this really nice terracotta color and we're going to oversaturate that because terracotta kind of is. And now the plant. We can tell so much about this character by how we color this plant and it's going to look ridiculous. So maybe he really likes his plant. He loves his plant. He just spends so much time taking care of his plant. Or maybe, uh, maybe he kind of forgot it exists. 
what do we think? D d does he love his plant? Or did he kind of forget it exists? Or... Is it just sad as hell? Three little things. Just three little changes. Tell so much. So much about how much attention he plays or he pays to that tan plant. Did he completely forget about it? Is it is it just completely dead? Has he been neglecting it? Or does he love it? Because that gives us so much information about the type of person he is. Is he a good plant dad or does he really suck at having plants? I think he kind of forgot, but it's not dead. I, I think this kind of slightly neglected, but maybe someone will notice in a day or two and bring it back to life look works really well for him. Now our painting, right now, it's got this. We could give it the same, similar kind. I don't want it the same color. We can give it a similar kind of color that the window, the window has. But that doesn't work for the painting itself. It works for the room. It doesn't work for the painting. Because the painting and the frame are, as a whole, a single unit. So we're not looking at the room. We are looking at the painting. And this painting really wants a dark frame. That really brings in the color of the painting. It helps some of those pinks really pop. What have we got now? Nail polish. Okay, so she's over here. She's doing her nail. It does kind of make it look like an artificial plant. She's doing her nails. So we'll say she's just kind of doing them this really nice pink color. Black. Uh, that shouldn't be that color that was supposed to be on a different layer uh the emery board can be that color so she's doing her nails pink maybe she's doing them purple i think pink looks better Bleh. there we go oh my god who keeps texting me uh we've got a magazine Let's just kind of, we're just going to give these vague little colors. They don't have to fit with anything because these magazines are their own thing. So that's the bottom one. Uh, the top one can be kind of this purple. And then the pages, we're going to have them slightly yellow just, just to give them some color. And right now we have built a lovely scene. So, so this, this is the house that he lives in. And we have given so much information with just a few layers. What is this, like 15 layers? We, we've kind of implied that there is some money, that there is some thought that was put into the items that he's put into his house. He has a set of tables. I don't normally color with this many layers, but yeah, this is a lot of layers. <laughs> He has so he has matching tables. His lamp was purchased with care. He's got this rug that matches the walls, but in a complimentary way. We, we've told a lot about this character just by the way we colored the background. Now, we're not done because we've got all of these clipping layers that I have invisible. Because... Part of the local color, now that we've got the colors figured out, we know what we want it to look like, we're going to work on texture. And the way that I like to do texture, you can do it with, with a paintbrush. You can actually, you know, put some effort into it. I like to use stock overlays. So we're going to go all the way back down to the wall texture. So we've got this ridiculous, I'll make it a little bit darker so that you can see it, this kind of stone color. Only I don't want it like that. We're just going to give it enough to where you can see if I zoom in. Oh, that's not how you zoom in. You can see that there is this rough texture to the wall. And that just kind of gives an idea that it, it's a surface. It's not just a gray void. And I've got these for everything. So the wall is this nice kind of stucco, stone, rough paint look. 
the floor, we've got this uh, wood grain on the floor, which is just... All of these are just stock photos. Photos I went to Unsplash, found them, uh, aligned them, and I will show you how I align these in another step. But we don't need to work work on that right now. So we've got this wood floor. So now it's not just a brown floor. We know it's a wood floor. And now these little rubber caps on his table make a lot more sense because he doesn't want to scrape up his floor. Yeah, <laughs> texture layer on 100% is so jarring and it's just, it, it's very obvious that you've used a texture layer. I like to put it eh, somewhere between 30 and 50. Just enough to imply that there's some texture there. Not enough to give away that you are lazy, <laughs> but you know, I'm pretty lazy. And a lot of this, uh, we'll go back over here real quick. A lot of it got hidden. You can see a little bit of those rough patches in the wall where the light is kind of diffusing off of them. The tables, I think, are where the most, most texture comes through. So we've got our rug texture, which is quite literally, I looked up a rug. And if we wanted to, we could even add some stripes or something to this rug. Did I do that? I might have done that. No, I didn't. That was another piece. If I had more time, I might do that, but you know, whatever. Again, we've got a different wall grain on the trim. And if I zoom in, this is where these textures take a long time to do. So I say that I'm lazy. I'm just detrimentally lazy at this point because always make sure that your texture follows the direction of the, of the thing that it's texturing. So this was about... 10 or 12 individual texture layers that were eventually flattened down to form this one. So we can see over here on the windowsill, the texture follows the natural grain that the wood would follow. So a little bit of a tip there. Um, the wall trim, wall trim, sofa legs is just another little wood grain texture. The sofa texture itself is just this rough fabric-y thing. I didn't put a whole lot of effort into that because it's pretty broken up as it is. So the table texture. I've got two different textures for this because it was just <laughs> ridiculous to try to make them fit. But we've got this texture here for this table. And what I did as well is I made sure that this little part had a different section of wood than the actual drawer did. That way the drawer doesn't look like it's part of the actual frame. So that's just another little tip when you are putting your stuff together. This kind of drove me nuts how I could not get these lines to align with that line. I don't think anyone noticed. I noticed. I spent way too much time trying to do that before I gave up, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Anyway, we're just going to throw down all these textures and then I'll talk about them. So we've got the lamp and the lampshade. That lampshade is ridiculous. Um, get a little bit less ridiculous, please. There we go. So basically what we've done now, just by making those overlay layers visible, we've just added a little bit of life to the room. Things don't look like solid patches of color. They look like they're things now. It adds dimension. It adds life. The wood grain texture on these tables especially. So if we have this wood grain here, if we take them off, maybe it's laminate. Maybe it's that weird, compressed, disgusting, whatever board it is that, you know, entertainment centers are made out of. Maybe it's, I don't know, really heavily painted. Maybe it's just kind of ridiculous. The wood tells us that this is a natural stained wood finish. It's not something that has been over-processed or overworked. So we've got this kind of wood color that matches the trim of the house. Not quite. Uh, it might match a little too much. I might change that. Although, granted, I could always just make that a little bit less visible and then it matches a lot less but I kind of like it more we'll go to like 50. I kind of like it to 
be visible, but maybe 70 was a little too much. What did I put it on 51? I want them to match. Ugh, there we go. So now, now it doesn't quite match that wood trim as much. But there we go. We have got, we've got our scene and we've told a very nice story. We kind of get an idea of who this character is, the way that he lives his life, just by the colors that we pick. Uh, now, real quick, we're just going to color in the characters, and I've done the same thing here. You guys, if you're following along, feel free to pick whatever colors you want. I am just throwing colors down from my or from my swatches here. Uh, her nose is this pink color here, and then her eyes are this color. Can't really see it, but there we go. Hair is this red color. Okay, now for what she's wearing. We can tell some stories about her. Now, does she like kind of these more subdued, desaturated colors? Or maybe, maybe she's a little bit funky. Maybe she wants to be wearing a neon top. I don't think she wants to be wearing a neon top, but you know, Maybe, maybe. And just that little change in the color of her top can kind of inform a little bit about her personality. Does she like garish, ridiculous colors or does she wear more understated colors? Just that little bit of a uh, shift will kind of change up the character a little bit. And then we're going to go over here to Walter and do the same thing so quickly ding. there it is okay i don't know where his colors are there we go uh his light colors there's the light color his nose is this one that's also his nails i labeled that weird his eyes is that one hair is this kind of purpley pinkish color and the eyes well that's already done so again, this this character, is he wearing kind of a light pastel color like he normally wears? Is he wearing more of a darker, bold color? Oh, that doesn't look good on him. <laughs> Maybe he is just absolutely ridiculous. I think we're going to go for the one that he would actually wear, this nice pastel violet. That's what I want to go for. Yeah, he's called Walter. And then again with his pants. He can be wearing... Where's a good khaki color? A nice khaki color, which initially that's actually what he was. He's a tanuki. That's what he is. So we can go for a khaki color. We can go for like these nice, uh, not that saturated, these kind of dark slacks. We can go for some blue jeans. He doesn't really wear a lot of jeans. If he does, he wears them black. So all of that really changes the look. I don't think he wears khakis. I think we're going to go for exactly as I did it originally. Yeah, a lot of people confuse him for a raccoon. He, he's more of a fox. So there we go. We're, we'll zoom out. And that is all of our local color. And just with the local color, we have told the viewer a lot, a lot about this character, who he is, the way that he lives, maybe how much money he has, kind of a little bit about his personality with the colors that he's wearing. He really, he really doesn't take care of his plant. He is just not into that plant. Celine really needs to fix that plant for him. Uh, <laughs> and we've, we've given a little bit of information about Celine. She's got these nice dark but bold colors, and then she's got this ridiculous pink nail polish that she's putting on. 
So we've given a lot of information about these characters already. Now we're going to tell the second part of the story. So we've told the background. We've given the uh, we've given the viewer a lot of information about who these characters are. Now let's give them some information about what is going on in this scene. Because it could just be a nice casual, there's nothing really going on in this scene. I had a patron recently ask me, why is this piece called Stop That? And for a very good reason. It is called Stop That for an amazingly good reason. So we're going to make it actually make sense. And the first thing we're going to do... Things are going to get a little bit funkalicious here because everything is currently colored white. But we're going to fix that. So this here is our ambient light layer. And this is the light that is coming from the lamp. And this is why I made sure that all of my layers were ready to go to begin with. Because we have the light. I wanted to make sure that it was bouncing off of the walls over here but that this wall is casting a shadow on that wall. And then we've got it kind of bouncing over here. It's, and then it's being obscured by the table, by this table. And it's just kind of a little bit of everywhere. But we have some choices to make. And I'm going to drop this down to about there for now. And then we can fuss with it later. Now, is he going to have an incandescent light? One of those horrible yellow lights that my dad has in every room of his house and you can't see what, what he's doing. Does he have this? Is this what we've got? Is it more of a brighter light, but still kind of yellow? Is he more of a natural light kind of guy? So more, more kind of blue. Now this is another one of those ones where the color of the light doesn't necessarily match what I would set up with in the camera. He's kind of reaching around her. His arm right over here, it's, it's reaching around, you just can't see it. But I think this character would have more natural light because everyone up here in Portland, if they're smart, has natural light. That's where this takes place, so ignore the fact that it's LA outside the window. So... But the problem with that natural light, it does have a very blue tint to it. We've got all this blue. We've got all this blue. So this is where we fudge things. We're going to go for yellow. We're going to go for yellow just because it makes the room a little bit more warm. It livens things up. And I'm just really trying to find the right shade of yellow. There it goes. Yellow light. And now we're going to boost that up. Just a little bit. About right, right there. Right there. So now we've got the light that's just being kind of thrown every... Do I not? Oh, yes, I do. Okay. We've got the light that's kind of being thrown everywhere, but now we need shadows. Now we need shadows. And here's a neat little trick. Our light... Our light is yellow. So our shadows are going to be complementary yellow light purple shadow kind of this purpley blue very dark desaturated but definitely purple shadow and watch this Ugh. preserve opacity please some of these might not have the opacity preserved so hello oh no shit uh I didn't preserve the opacity on that one, which means I didn't preserve the opacity on that. Real quick, let me... We'll come back to that. I need to get something, though. Uh... Okay, we'll come back to these, because those are broken. So if you got those, I apologize. Apparently I did not lock those layers before I fixed before I set this up. Oops. So we'll just go to the ambient shadow and come back to that. So the ambient shadow does the same thing. Everywhere where there is light, 
or everywhere where there isn't light, there will be shadow. And I think I fucked that one up too. Let me see. Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, good. It looked like, okay, yeah, I can see down in my thumbnail. It's fine. Uh, it just looked funky. But we can see there that we've got these darker areas underneath the table. And on this side of the table, down the hall is very dark. I am going to export this and grab those extra layers real quick. No! Where's the PSD? And Procreate broke again. I have to save to files. And then I have to go here, personal, 2020. Which is annoying because there were a few things I wanted to fix in there. Stop that layers. Okay. But this is an easy fix. This is a very easy fix. Okay, there we go. Hello? Ah, minor calamities. Where is it? <laughs> How are you? There we go. So I'm just going to drop this in here and grab those layers. Can't believe I did that. Okay. This is what the... There's still a lot of layers, but this is what the actual working full file looked like. Uh, this. Okay. So we're going to drop that there. Get rid of you. Main shadow. What was this? I don't know. I can't tell what that is. What does that say? Secondary shadow? What the hell was secondary shadow? <gasps> I know what secondary shadow was. Okay, that's fine. I can just put that in there. So, we'll get rid of that. Crisis averted, I think. That was a pretty easy fix. I'm going to fix a few things, though, real quick. Uh, just because they don't seem to exist on this. So I'm going to grab that. And grab this. Because I've always hated this. I guess it doesn't really matter. I have always hated how this does not really line up well. So we'll fix that real quick. Yeah. Man, I spent three hours today making sure everything was perfect. And then that happened. Well, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I wanted to fix it. So there we go. We fixed it. And then I need to go down and add something in here. It's little tiny details, but it'll make a difference. Yeah, and I'll show you how I did that. Oh, I guess I didn't really need to do that. So I guess I screwed that up somewhere. Anyway, we're going to make it like this kind of color here. Just make sure that it all... Uh, almost did it again. Preserve opacity. There we go. And this is just making it all the same color. Oh, because I screwed that up. Okay. So we've got this yellow light, which I might even boost up a little bit more. 
and we've got this ambient shadow here which is going to make it the same color actually because I want them to multiply on one another and then we're just going to put that on multiply and here's some fun little things the darker your shadow the brighter you are implying your lamp is so we don't really imply the light source or imply how bright the light source is by adding more light we imply how bright the light source is by adding more shadow so we uh if we drop that down the light becomes more diffuse within the room if we really crank it up this is almost a spotlight so we don't want it like that we want it like around here and i will show you what happens i'll take off the ambient overlay just to kind of give you an idea and you can really see how much of a difference that made it really makes the room feel like it is an enclosed space that light is bouncing off of areas and just getting stuck in other areas so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep that on so we have this yellow light so what happens if we decide to make our shading brown what happens well it just got all real flat didn't it it got very flat the shadow and the light just kind of blend into one another in some areas with the blue shadow or the purple shadow if it's you just want to generally have it contrasting it will stand out more so just a little trick there to make your shadows and your ambient light not completely fade into one another uh, hard highlights there we go those ones actually work we're going to come back over here and just grab the yellow because I want them to be the same yellow and these hard highlights are all of these white areas we're going to turn them yellow 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 and just kind of drop them down that's just where the light is particularly hitting hard on an edge so like her hair is really shiny his toes are really shiny this one's gonna be hard the TV highlights, there are three different uh, layers for this. There's a luminosity layer, there is a shade layer, and there's a luminosity and shade layer, and they're all the same shape. So I'm just going to turn all of them on. And I'm going to, in this instance, we want these oversaturated, way too high value. We're going to tamp in that corner. And then I'm going to grab a watercolor brush and I'm going to make it enormo. And we're just going to kind of paint in a lot of really bright colors. So like a little green, I think. And some blue. And we want it to kind of blend together. We don't want it all to be one color. And this is the light that is coming from the TV, which is off camera. And it's just bouncing on the surfaces that are facing the TV. So we've got that. Then we're going to kind of come over here and do the same thing on shade. On our shade layer, maybe grab a couple of darker ones just to help it pop. Maybe some violet. Add some dark violet in there. We don't want it to be too ridiculous. And then the last one over here, just kind of... Uh, A little bit of blue and I'm just using the watercolor brush watercolor brush and size is really good for these kind of things uh, lighten that up a little bit maybe and I want a splash of pink now it's all kind of ridiculous it's way too over the top so we're just gonna drop that down Bap. Just enough that you can see it to give the impression that there is another source of light. So there we go. And all that does, literally all that does is just gives them a reason to be out here on the couch. Ostensibly, they're on the couch together because they're watching TV. 
She's also doing her nails. And we're going to turn this one on first. That's just a little lamp burst right here. And that gives us the impression that there is a light actually inside that lamp. That is all that does. That just defines where our light source is. And now the reason why I need to come back over here and grab this color again. The reason why this piece is called Stop That is this layer right here. This layer right here. While she is doing her nails, she is minding her own business. This absolute asshole. I need a pencil. Look what he's doing to her. He is plunging this poor woman into shadow. And she is trying to do her nails. What an asshole. Look at that. Look at that. He's so mean. He is so mean. So that's why this piece is called Stop That. Because this we have... Yeah, I, to I told you there's a very good reason. <laughs> so here we have for this piece, and we're going to color this again. But right now we have this couple fairly well off from the looks of their place. It's a very well put together place. It's very well decorated. And again, I'll show you what it looked like when I was able to put three or four days into it. So this is what it looks like when it's actually properly rendered and not just slapped together. So we have this couple who are chilling out. They're having a good evening together. Fairly well off. Probably fairly professional. Bigfoot Shadow just messing up, messing up her night. He's so mean. He's so mean. So we, we know a lot about these characters just from this. Just from this, we know a lot about these characters. But, but, what if, what if I'm going to just keep duplicating this folder as long as Sai allows me to? Um, how? Like this. I literally just forgot how to duplicate a folder. What if, instead of being... 9, 10 o'clock at night. We're going to turn all of this off now. What if it's the middle of... What, what if it's day? What if it's day? Uh, oops, didn't want that one. Suddenly now when it's day... That doesn't work. So. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Did I derp again? Did I derp again? Give me this. Give me this. Apparently the... I really hope nobody's using the sci file because this is... <laughs> okay well that's fine again it's a fairly easy fix we're just gonna copy a bunch of layers over because <laughs> i derped i done derped it ignore this If you are following along with the sci file, um, I'm going to resave it real quick and you can re-download it. Yeah. yeah. Totally different conditions. Uh, <laughs> which I had three hours to do, so they're not the best. Okay, so... Now, yeah, we're going to tell a different story. I lost my pen. There it is. Because we could say that the lamp is on, but for right now, we're just going to go with this. Uh, what are you?
Okay. Uh, just very quickly renaming layers for people. Uh, hard. I don't. I don't know how many people would have grabbed this one, but what are you? Oh wait, that's not ambient light. That's ambient shadow. This one's ambient light. You guys, I spent four hours today making sure this was all put together. Rays. And. It's just white. That's just the white one. Okay. If you were using the sci file, it's been saved. It's, it's put back together. Okay. So this is the ambient shadow. And I'm going to actually start off with the ambient light up here. <laughs> there. So if we... Fuck. Luminosity. There we go. So if we put these on luminosity, we... I'm going to look out here. And the picture that I picked, which... <laughs> you ain't blurred... Why didn't you? Whatever. <laughs> Y'all, oh my god, today. Okay. So, this piece here. <laughs> uh, we're looking out here. We've got kind of this yellowy sky. It's definitely kind of like an afternoon sky, late, e or late evening. So, I'm going to grab that exact shade of yellow. That is the shade of yellow from the sky that I'm going to have coming in through the window. And preserve the opacity, please. There we go. Drop that down. So we've got this light just kind of around. And again, it's, it's very, very light outside. So if we were to say, have it blue. If we decided that this was blue, that that is very incongruous. That is not the light that is coming from that window. It just it looks weird. So always make sure that the ambient light matches the color that the light actually is. And I am going to... I even said I was going to do this and then I didn't do this. <laughs> Set. Bam. So we've got this, uh, uh, no, well, whatever. Got this light coming in. I'm just gonna make sure it's the right color. And then we've got our ambient shadow down here, which again, we're going to go for like a purple. A very dark, desaturated purple. Make sure it's on preserve opacity and black. And I'm gonna set that. That's why I don't have to keep going back to find what colors I was using. There. I like that one better. So, thank you. Set. So, just once again, we're using the ambient light radiating off of the light source and kind of going from one corner to the other. I always find that's a really nice way of doing it. Go from one corner to the other. And then wherever the ambient light doesn't reach, we're just going to fill that in with shadow. So we have now here our main shadow, which again, we're just going to do the same thing as last time. I spent so much time making sure this was right and then I didn't save it. <laughs> Just once again, drop some shadow on there. Uh, our hard highlights, same deal. Preserve opacity. And then drop, drop it down. And then our rays, which preserve opacity. And this is just the sunlight that's coming in through the window. It's the same deal that was on his foot. It's the exact same thing. Only it's coming in a different direction. Uh, 
luminosity. That's what I forgot to do. And drop that down. Alright, well this will be saved on the channel. So here we go. Now all of a sudden... He is not able... Oh, I didn't do it here either. That's why that looks weird. Uh, luminosity, main shadow. That's why that looks weird. Multiply. Ambient shadow. Multiply. Multiply, multiply, luminosity. Okay, there we go. That looks better. So all of a sudden now, we have completely changed this story. They are no longer sitting here watching TV. He's just kind of there to be there. He's not blocking the light anymore. It's a totally, totally different scene. Just by changing where the light was coming from. And we can turn the TV back on. If we turn the TV back on... Again, it gives kind of a slightly different feel. Now, though, the TV is a little bit too bright, but oh well. Or... Or... We can do another funny thing. He can still be blocking her off. We'll just turn our ambient light here back on, but turn it way the heck down. Very way down. Uh, we turn our main shadows on as well. So now they're both on multiply, so they will overlap with one another. Uh, come up here and turn that one down because there's m light coming from over here. So now we've got these areas of overlapping shadow where the light is coming in from here, where the light is coming from here. We're going to put that first back on and bring our cast shadow back. And now the cast shadow, though, it's not as light and she's still got light over here. So he's kind of trying to mess with her, but now he's not being as successful. Now it doesn't work, and he, he's just kind of, he thinks he's funny, but he, he's not even succeeding at that. So now we've completely changed the story. We have got three different stories now that we've got going on here. Again, just by fussing with where things are. Not quite sure what's going on over there. That's way too blown out, but oh well. So I would normally put a little bit more time into making sure that these aren't blown out. But, 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 what happens now? What, can we change this story to be completely different? Can I? Yep. And, and that's another thing, too. Shadows only multiply, meaning they'll only get darker where they overlap if there's more than one light source. So, like, over here on his foot, there's the shadow that's cast, cast by the lamp right here. And then there's the shadow that's cast by the light, or by the, uh, by the window right here. And they kind of get darker, and then he's got these brighter highlights here and there. So... Just a bunch of different things going on. You can really see that on her legs, too, where they overlap and multiply. And I do that just by putting cell shading on different layers and throwing them on multiply. So we've got, again, just these really dark areas down here because neither the lamp nor the sunlight is getting light underneath that table. It's dark down here, and then we've got these really bright areas. If I turn off this i think you can even see that it's kind of dark down here in the hallway there is uh, somewhere yeah it's kind of dark down here in the hallway as well but but earlier i was saying that we were telling a story about the character by how we chose to color his world so i'm going to turn all of these off for now just in how we chose to color his world, we told a story about who he is. But what if... What if I made another copy of this? Completely explode my computer. I make it very angry because it doesn't like what I'm doing. I think I made too much layers. Definitely made too many layers. 
damn it. Okay, I'll try one more time. Nope, it doesn't like it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, fine. Fine. Okay. Well, we'll just... I wanted to be able to compare them all. I'll just save them, I guess. So. Oh, wait, no, it's right there. It went right there. Okay, I was just dumb. I did, I did duplicate it. Cool. Because I didn't want to do that. Okay, uh, so... We're going to go back to our background. We're going to go back to our background. And now we're going to make some very real choices. Uh, so I'm going to turn off all of these for now. Because I don't want any of them. We're just going to go back to local color. And you'll really start to see how much of a difference everything made. All of a sudden, these colors are so bright and vibrant and just ridiculous. But that's fine. That's fine. So, he owns this house. This is a house that he has put a lot of money into. He's put a lot of time into it. What happens? What happens if we go for those drab rental colors? What happens? Oh, it's angry. Nope, it didn't like it. Okay, fine. Okay, well, I'll just do what I was going to do then, I guess. And, uh... Oop, I'll keep doing that. Take pictures. Or not take pictures, just save them individually, I guess. Eh, whatever. No, I won't. No, I won't. Seems like too much work all of a sudden. Background. Just do this again. Okay. Back to what we were talking about. There were a lot of decisions made for how his house is decorated. He or someone put a lot of work into this. The house is well maintained. It's had thought put into whether things look good as a set. Things might have even been bought as a set. But, but, what if he doesn't have that kind of money? We can, we can show that. We can very easily show that. And we're going to do that by giving him what I call rental colors. So, really ugly, ugly walls. Just no, no color to them at all. Just a hint of yellow because maybe the previous tenant smoked. And then the floor, I don't think, I don't think this place is going to have wood floors. I think this place is carpeted. And I think this place has really ugly beige carpet. That's what I think. And then... His rug. His rug is going to be this thing that he found at Goodwill. He put that rug in here because there is no color in this beige nightmare. So we have got this orange rug. Uh, might even make it a little bit more red. Yeah, there. Now he's got this ridiculous red rug. The window frames, I think, I think they can stay white. White seems good. They can actually stay white. The wall trim, however, no, 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 no. So this wall trim, we are going to go for the same but different. We're just going to make it darker value, just slightly darker value. Maybe bump the saturation by two or three. So now we've got these walls that he's not allowed to paint. For some asinine reason, someone painted the trim. So the w the windows all just kind of melt into a uh, melt into themselves. The sofa. The sofa. Does he have this nice sofa, or does he have? I'm on the wrong layer for the sofa. Does he just you know have that one that he's borrowing from his parents? Is he borrowing? Yeah, 
too bright. Is he borrowing a sofa from his parents, do we think? I think we can leave the legs that color, that's fine. The metal trim. I think this table and this table are two totally different things. So we're going to give this one, the metal trim can be black. Metal details can be fine. The wood, this one here, we're going to go for a much darker wood. So the, these don't even pretend to match. Not even for a little bit. The lamp. Yeah, let's go for blue. And the lamp shade. We'll keep the lamp shade because maybe... Maybe that's not the lampshade that it came with. Maybe the lampshade broke. And maybe he had to go get a new one from Goodwill. So we're going to keep the lampshade. Flower pot's the same. The plant, we can keep that the same. The painting, the nail polish. Those we can all stay, keep the same. The only things that we have changed are the design elements within the house. So now we have... I have two of these. Okay, yeah. So if I come in here and I turn this one on and I turn off all of these just real quick. Okay. So now we have created a very different scene already. His entire personality, the entire way that he lives his life changed just because we changed the local color he's got these white walls nothing matches the rugs this ridiculous co color the sofas this ridiculous color the tables don't match the lamp doesn't match its own lampshade like there might have been a little bit of thought put into not having everything completely bonkers like maybe his t maybe his sofa could be a sofa that we used to have here. Uh, where am I looking for this? I mean his sofa. Could be this. Uh, oh, that's the wrong one. Oops. I always forget that Psy lets you do that. Let's you color on layers that aren't visible. It's the one thing I did like about Procreate. Where'd it go? There it goes. Maybe he just he, maybe he's got this ridiculously garish sofa, but you know, eh. We won't go quite that ridiculous with it. And then we can turn back on some of our overlays. So the wall texture. All of a sudden, at 42% for the slate, that is way too much. So we're going to drop that way down. We can keep the wall texture, though. That floor texture, not at all. Not at all. And I had to navigate away from that folder because everything broke. So this is actually AstroTurf, but you know what? It will work. AstroTurf will work. And I'll just show you real quick. Oh, it's angry. Maybe that's why it's angry. Maybe because I had three different versions of this open. That would do it. Okay. Can I copy you? Yes. <laughs> that would do it. So for our floor, we're just gonna... Drop that there. And if we just drop that down, it it just looked weird. It completely eliminated any sense of perspective that we had. So I'll show you how I do this. I'm just going to transform. And then I am going to use this line on the wall trim. It's not going to line up with the wall trim, but we're going to use that line on the wall trim. Uh, make it small enough to work with first. And I'm just going to go here and just line that up, line that up with that. And then 
this line here. I'm just vaguely following that perspective. And then this one, I'm going to bring it in a little bit. And now, if I hit enter, the grain of that ridiculous astroturf that I used follows the perspective. It kind of gets stretched that way. You can't really see it. It gets stretched this way. So when you're putting your, your overlays on, if you choose to do that, just make sure that your picture follows your perspective. Now I'm going to go to hue and saturation, desaturate so that it is grayscale, multiply, and then we're just going to go like there. And now his carpet's textured. It's astroturf, but you know, when it's that, when it's that light, you can't really tell. Bring back the rug, the wall trim, which for some reason is not desaturated. There we go. And then we're just going to kind of mm, imply that it was wood at one point before someone decided to uh, paint over it. End table, end table, lamp. There we go. Bam. And we've just got two very different scenes. Ridiculously different scenes. And we have not touched anything in the line art. At no point. You leaving? Hi. At no point in all of this fussing did we touch the line art. Everything we have done was just changing color. And we have got so many different iterations of this same piece. And then we can go through and we can do all this again. So we can say that we are inside at night. Bam. And somehow this doesn't feel as cozy. This feel... Something's going weird. Oh well, don't care. Th this feels... <laughs> almost clinical. The room feels very cold. It doesn't feel very lived in for some reason. The slate one seems like it seems more comfortable. It's somewhere I would rather be, I think. And then we do have the wrong uh, wrong background in here, so let's make that match. Bam. It's just weird. It just doesn't look right. I mean... It could look right if you didn't know who these characters were. This could look just fine. I mean, it, it's it's a house. It's still well taken care of. But it doesn't look like a lot of thought was put into it. It doesn't look like... It's not personal. This house has not been personalized. The furniture has. The house has not. And then again, we can come in here. And do the same thing. We'll delete these first. Bloop, 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 bloop. And then... There we go. Oop, not that. Uh, that is just way too much because the, the, uh, the walls are already so, so light that any ambient light just kind of washes it out. So we don't get the same atmosphere. And once we changed the atmosphere, we again kind of changed the story. It doesn't seem as cozy. And then we can turn this stuff back on. And get kind of this funky evening look where he's still, you know, he thinks he's funny, but he's not. But when we changed these colors, let me turn all this back on really show the differences between uh, that's not going to have the outside stuff though and i don't feel like putting it back on there so let me just turn off the outside stuff just give us a more direct comparison between the two uh, there we go you can see that there's a very big difference in the story that was being told. So, 
in this one, we've got we've we've got a fundamentally fundamentally different attitude, fundamentally different atmosphere than this one. Nothing has changed. All that's changed was I changed a few colors. And in doing that, we have changed so much about these characters. We've changed where they live. We have changed their design tastes. We've changed how much money they make. We have changed the, the atmosphere and the feel and the way that they live their lives just by changing the, the color of the room and just by changing little things, by making the tables not match, by making the furniture ridiculous colors instead of theming everything to the room, the way that the lampshade doesn't match the lamp. They all tell different stories and they're not big stories. They're not going to tell a story in the sense of you can look at this and you can see something that happened in a linear fashion. But these characters are very different to these characters. They have not changed. I didn't change their clothes. I didn't change anything in the composition. I just changed the room that they were in. And... They're different. They are different people. Fundamentally. Have fun. Thanks. Thanks for stopping by. But they are fundamentally different. So that's, that's what I was uh, wanting to show you guys is that yes, you can absolutely use a predefined palette. You can use a harmony palette. Uh, I think three and four color harmonies are very popular, very common. But when you do that, you're actually removing the character from the scene or you might be changing the character so when we have these characters here they're very cozy they they look very comfortable and they do here too that hasn't changed they look very comfortable but these people look more financially comfortable these people look like they're, they're comfortable but they could have more money. And it's just a very subtle thing. Someone here has put a lot of money into making the house look nice. They've put a lot of money into buying sets of furniture, into ha they have the amount uh, bleh, they have the kind of money that lets them put time into picking a rug and a sofa that matches their walls. These people bought a rug and a sofa because it was there. These people bought a, bought these tables and this lamp because it was there. Neither of them waters this damn plant. They both have weird taste in art. But this one does not live with the same finances that this one does. It's that, it's that much of a subtle different thing. So... There we go. This this was just a quick little lasted actually. I expected it to go about two hours, but I think it went faster uh, than I planned. Even with those little mess ups, it kind of uh kind of went pretty quick. But if you've been like Minxie said, kind of curious about the behind the scenes, or if you've been struggling with color and setting the right mood, setting the right tone, getting a feeling across. It's often easier to put yourself as you're picking your colors, not what you would want. Not don't pick colors based on your own aesthetics or what you would want to have for your own. Cause I don't think I would live in this. I think the dark walls would be a little bit too claustrophobic, but for, but this is what this character likes. He likes these kind of darker colors. He likes these deeper, richer tones. Like this one here. Col paint these walls a different color. Paint them like blue or something. And I feel like this would be something a little bit more comfortable for me. But neither of these characters are me. So I would paint them based on what the characters want. And that's kind of, I think, something that a lot of people miss is forgetting that 
the characters that are in a scene have their own personalities they have their own tastes and when you design a when you design something based on your own tastes it can make that character seem just a little out of character so these files will remain up i might update the links to have this version plus the uh, plain version or you can just use this version i guess I'll probably put the layers where they belong because, oh my god, I can't believe I did that. I'm so glad I saved it as a PSD as well because I spent three hours today uh, doing the daylight shading, which is a lot less time than I would normally spend, but I didn't want to be doing that live because I knew it was going to take several hours. So I hope you guys found something helpful with this. I hope you learned something. I hope... I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, I try to check my comments here on YouTube. I'm very bad at it. I am more active on Twitter. You can find all of that info up on my main bar. You can catch me in the Discord as well. But this was, this was a lot of fun. Like I said, I hope it's helpful. I hope you learned something. I hope you got something out of it. I cannot find the right tab to end this damn stream. But here we go. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your couch con. And I'm gonna go. I'm hungry. I'm going to go make some lunch. And this will also remain up. Uh, this will remain public. It might disappear for a few hours while YouTube processes it, but this isn't going anywhere. So thank you guys for hanging out. I'm starving. I've had half a thing of coffee, so I'm gonna peace out. You guys have a great night. Bye!